Can coaches teach? What an unnecessary question. Of course they can. Have you ever watched an eight-person crew row down a river, each rower acting in perfect synchronization with another? They didn't know how to do that innately. A coach had to show them how to do it. They didn't know the difference between 20 and 25 strokes a minute or a half stroke and a three-quarter stroke. A coach had to show them. They didn't know how to take care of a shell. They didn't even know how to lift one or carry it or put it in the water or to get in it without tipping it over, my great fear. A coach had to show them how to do it. Of course, coaches can teach. Imagine with me, if you will, another scenario, one of the great venues of sports, an NCAA tournament basketball game. It's near the end of the game. The game is tied. The player in the green jersey is dribbling the ball. Another player tries to take it away from him, a player in a white shirt. He catches the ball but can't control it, so he bounces it off the player in green and out of bounds. What happens? The player in green immediately jumps up, points toward his basket, and says, my ball, my ball. Have you seen that happen? My ball. He knows it went off of his leg. There's an overhead screen showing thousands of people in the arena that it went off of his leg. There are millions of people around the world seeing it on TV. My ball. He is lying. <laughs> Cheating in public. And nobody cares. Have you ever heard a broadcaster say, there's an athlete in the middle of the court lying and cheating? <laughs> you ever heard a sports writer write about it? Have you ever heard a coach, or can you imagine, going up to him after the game and saying, well, the next time it goes out off of you, you ought to just go back and play defense? Or better yet, the next time the ball goes off of you, you ought to hand it to the ref and point toward your opponent's goal because... How you play the game is more important than whether you win or lose. It isn't going to happen. Across the country, or perhaps halfway around the world, there's a 12-year-old boy watching that game and taking in every play. A week later, in his sixth grade basketball game, a ball goes off of his hand, and he stands up and says, my ball, my ball. Because he has learned to lie and cheat because his hero in the green jersey did the same thing. When you start to look for those activities in sports, there are many opportunities to learn bad behavior. It happens when a catch catcher moves the mitt to make a ball look like a strike. When a basketball player takes a flop and says, I was hit by that other player. When a soccer player says, it didn't touch my hands, and uh, it happens when a pitcher doctors a baseball, or a tennis player calls a ball that hits on the line out, or circles the wrong ball mark. I was watching the uh, finals of the NCAA softball tournament. There was a routine ground ball to second base, throw to first, the batter is out. The batter's coach in the coaching box is going, safe safe. And we say, it's no big deal. It's okay for the coach and the student uh, athlete to be trying to influence the play. The umpire has to make the call. It's the way we play the game. And it is just a game. It's no big deal. Well, it was a big deal to that 12-year-old boy. It was a learning experience for him. And if he learns to cheat, and lie in a game, why not do it on a test or in a boardroom? And if he learns to try to win a point that he shouldn't win, to steal an umpire's call, you know, why not steal an item from a store or from a friend? And it's a big deal to me. I'm a university president, and I care what coaches do because they are teachers and role models. And I care what players do because they are showing the world what they have learned. And I care because those coaches and those players are representing the university. I tell players when they go on a road trip, when you pull into a restaurant 
and you get out of a van or you get out of a bus, the only thing the people in that restaurant are going to know about the university is how you act that day. Behavior makes a world of difference. Can coaches teach? Absolutely they can. Can they teach what we need them to teach? I hope so, but it's not easy. There are all those pressures from administrators and boosters to win games. There are the peer pressure of athletes and what they learned in the play yards uh, and play, playgrounds when they were young. There are all those financial rewards for winning. There's that culture that says winning isn't everything, it's the only thing. Did you see that Nike ad with Tiger Woods? Winning takes care of everything, perhaps even behavior we consider morally inappropriate. I wonder if that 12-year-old boy saw that Nike ad. But I believe that coaches can teach what we want, and that's what I want them to do. I want coaches to be teachers. I want uh, arenas and playing fields to be places where people learn. And I want games to be where those athletes demonstrate what they have learned and demonstrate their competence. And so this may be challenging for you. And you may be thinking that uh, the idea is wild, but it is one that I would like to see pursued. It seems to me that if coaches are among the highest paid people in a university, they ought to be a part of the teaching community. If they're part of the teaching community and if students are learning, that, that learning ought to be assessed. And if it, is, if it is assessed, then they ought to get credit for it. Wait a minute. I didn't say that, did I? Athletes ought to get credit, not for playing, not for winning, but for demonstrating that they've learned something about leadership and citizenship and good behavior. That's what I want them to get credit for. It's a preposterous idea to suggest that we ought to give credit to student athletes. But this is my preposterous talk, and so I'm going to play it out to the best of my ability. So I've got this wild image of an athletic director going to a curriculum committee and saying to the committee, on behalf of the athletic department, I want to request that we be allowed to grant up to six hours of credit to our student athletes. And here's what we will do. First, we will teach them teamwork. We will teach them how to work as a team. We will teach them how to work with people from different backgrounds, cultural and ethnic. We will teach them how to respond to the weak and great performances of others so that they can make the team stronger. We will teach and assess their capacity to evaluate their own performance and to change it so the team is better. Don't we want that? Second, we will assess and teach students communication skills, interpersonal and small group communication skills. We will require each athlete to make a presentation to the rest of the team. And we will evaluate that presentation for the agreement between verbal and nonverbal communications, for organization, for uh, having the proper language to address the particular audience. And then we will give them a follow-up presentation and see whether or not they've learned and improved from the first one. Don't we want that of every graduate? And third, we will also teach and assess their capacity to think ethically. We want to know whether or not they can identify what's an ethical issue, whether or not they can articulate different perspectives about those issues that lead to different conclusions. And then we will assess their capacity to make a decision and to implement that decision. Wouldn't you like to be there in that curriculum committee to hear that discussion when the athletic director makes that plea? I want to be there, not just for that, but I want to be there the day the curriculum committee votes yes. Because that day, 
they will make the statement that in this institution, the athletic department is part of the learning environment of the institution. Coaches have responsibility and accountability for their capacity to teach and what they teach. The athletic director has some responsibility and reports to the academic dean. We have readjusted the balance between athletics and academics, and in this institution, student-athlete is not just an idealized term, but is a fact. I want to see that. And I think it's important because there are so many people in our society who lament that we are not where we ought to be with regard to values and morals. There are so many people in our society who say, we need to change, we need to do better, and why not begin with sports? We know people learn their values at an early age. That's why I want to see the day when that 12-year-old boy stands up and without any signals, after the ball goes out of bounds off of him, goes back and plays defense because he saw the player in the green jersey do the same thing. And that player learned that behavior from the best teacher he ever had, his coach. One more story, and that's a softball story. It was the top of the second inning in a softball game between Western Oregon and Central Washington. Sarah Tukolsky came to bat. It was next to the last game of the season. She'd only batted 34 times all year. She only had three hits. On the second pitch, she hits the only home run she ever hit in her life. She was excited. She takes off running. She watches the ball clear the fence and realizes she'd missed first base. She turns quickly to touch the base, wrenches her knee, and pulls and tears her ACL. She cannot run. She can't get the home run unless she touches every base. She can't be helped by her players. She can't be helped by her coach. What to do? Mallory Hauptman, a player in a white uniform, a player for Central Washington, says, can we carry her? The answer was yes. So Mallory and a teammate go out. They pick up Sarah. They take her to second base so she can touch it, third base and home, so she can get the only home run of her life. And it ended up being the run that meant that Central Washington lost the game and Oregon Eastern, Western Oregon won. Now, where did Mallory learn those skills? Where did she learn sportsmanship? Where did she learn citizenship and leadership and good behavior? She learned it from a coach named Gary Franklin. And Gary Franklin had in the locker room that Mallory saw every day, those, his motto which said, play the game as if it were everything. Play the game as if it means everything and realize it doesn't. Play the game as if it means everything and realize it doesn't. In fact, softball was third on the list of priorities that he gave his players because he was preparing them for life, not for a softball game. Can Coach Franklin teach? You bet he can. Can he teach? what we want him to teach to student athletes? Absolutely. Every coach can do that, and let us ask them to do it.